Hello everyone and welcome to another quick video where I wanted to talk about a very cool thing that I finally accomplished recently. Uh, so I've been developing my own programming language for like a couple of months, I think. You can find the link uh, to this uh, programming language in the description, uh, right? So the language is called Porth. And one of the goals for that, la for that language was uh, to make it self-hosted. Self-hosting means that the language um, is written in itself. I started rewriting the language in itself uh, roughly a month ago, right? And I'm really happy to announce that uh, the language is finally able to compile itself, right? I didn't fully re-implement the language. There are still some features missing, but at least the language is capable of compiling itself and the result of the self-compilation is able to compile itself again. Right. So essentially, you don't really need to implement all of the features of the language to make it self-hosted. You only need to implement the features that are needed for self-hosting. Right. So, uh, for instance, we don't support um, a type checking at all. Right. So because you don't really need it to uh, to be self-hosted. Right. You only need it for the convenience of the development. But once you develop the source code, you don't really need it. Right. So you can just like have uh, not type check like dynamic dynamically typed um, compiler and it will be able to compile itself without any type checking, right? So, but it's not going to be convenient to develop. Uh, anyway, so let's actually take a look at how um, it works, right? So let's take a look at the recent version of Porth. So here in, uh, in the source code of Porth, we have two main files, porth.py and porth.porth. Porth.py is the original implementation in Python that uh, basically takes the source code and uh, generates assembly and then feeds that assembly into NASM. Uh, and then from NASM, we generate object file and then we link that object file into, uh, into the final executable. I can even show how it looks like so we can write a simple hello world. Uh, right, so first of all, let's include the standard library. Uh, std.porth and let's write a very quick hello world. So this is going to be something like this. And then I'm going to use the Python compiler, right? So I'm going to compile uh, hello.porth and as you can see, it generates assembly, hello.asm, then it feeds that assembly to nasm, uh, which will generate object file, and then we link that object file, right? So as you can see here, we have a bunch of files uh, related to hello program, and the main one is hello. Uh, if we take a look at that uh, file, it's a 64 bit executable, and it's statically linked. We don't depend on anything right now, even libc, right? And if I try to run uh, this program, it says hello world. Uh, one of the things I forgot I think I forgot to put a new line in here, right? So I think it's quite important. Uh, I think a new line is quite important in here. Okay, so and here we have uh, a compiler rewritten in itself. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit smaller, right? But this is because it doesn't implement everything, right? So there is a quite a lot of code in here, right? So all of that is just basically compiler implementing its own functionality. And let's go ahead and try to compile the compiler, uh, the porth.porth compiler with porth.py, right? So I'm gonna just take porth.porth and feed it into porth.py and see what's gonna happen. So it generated the assembly for this thing and now it fed that assembly into NASM and then it linked it uh, into the final executable. And so we can see the final executable of the port compiler in here. It's actually quite big, uh, 407 kilobytes. Um, so the source code in assembly is actually a little bit bigger, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so let's take a look at uh, this executable. This executable uh, accepts a couple of commands and stuff like that. There's like the interface is slightly different from port.py, but eventually I'm going to unify the interface. Hopefully the uh, the command line interface of port.port is going to be the same as the Python version. So, and we can try to feed the hello world program into this compiler and um, it also automatically run it. So I made it to autom automatically run the compiled program for ease of the development. And um, as you can see, it, yeah, it generated hello world uh, and it doesn't really properly name things. It just calls them output, right? So, and uh, yeah, if we take a look at this thing, it's the output. Uh, output compiler. And the most interesting thing, what is going to happen if we try to close the loop and feed 
the uh, source code of the compiler into itself. Will it be able to compile itself? So let's actually go ahead and like, remove some of these files. And uh, I'm gonna try to do precisely that. And it generated assembly, it feeds it into NASM, and it managed to actually generate, uh, you know, itself. Right, so now output, uh, output is the compiler. It is uh, the compiler. So, and we can even try to compare their assemblies. So let's uh, basically apply diff to ports.asm and output.asm generated by ports.porth. And there is no difference between these two files, right? So it generated itself, right? So essentially what we have, we have a sequence of CPU instructions that given a description of itself, is capable of generating the same sequence of instructions. So, and thus we kind of close the loop. Um, so, yeah, but uh, we still can't interpret the uh, the programs, right? So there's like a few operations in intermediate representation that are not implemented for interpretation. So there's some features missing, but at least it is capable of compiling itself and is actually pretty exciting. It is actually pretty exciting. So uh, one of the plans that I had uh, is basically get rid of Python once port is rewritten in itself. But I think we still have a long way to go for that because yeah, there's a lot of things that we need to implement first to be able to get rid of Python. I think Python is gonna stay for a while uh, and I'm gonna actively work on getting rid of it. Um, so eventually, my plan is that there will be no Python in the in the final repo, and for bootstrapping the compiler, you're supposed to be using ports.asm, right? So we're gonna basically generate ports.asm once, and we're gonna commit it with the uh, with the repo. And uh, if you want to bootstrap the compiler for the first time, you would take the asm file, compile it with nasm, and then you will have a port compiler that it will be able to compile itself, right? So that way we don't we won't need Python at all. So right now we only support x86-64 um, architectures, but in the future we're gonna support more architectures. And for all of the supported architectures, we're gonna have a single assembly file, right? We're gonna support ARM, we're gonna have additional file for ARM. We're gonna support MIPS, we're gonna have additional file for MIPS. And also for different operating systems, right? So we not only uh, support x86-64, we specifically only support Linux, right? So if we're gonna add support for Windows, we're also gonna have like x86-64 Windows assembly file and so on and so forth. We can even try to sort of simulate how such repo will look like, right? So let's actually create a folder bootstrap. So in the final repo, I would like to just have like a few files. The first file I wanna have is uh, port.asm. Uh, then port.port. .port. Um, so do we need anything else? I think we'll need... Uh, why did you open that? Oh my god. Uh, and I think we also need the standard library. So I'm going to copy paste the standard library. And standard library consists of a single file, basically std.port. Right, so roughly you're going to have these things. Uh, right, and you don't have have the port compiler. So the first thing you would do, you would compile uh, the port.asm. So f f64 uh, dot asm. Right, you would generate the object file. Uh, so it will take some time. Okay, so here's the object file. We're gonna link the object file into the final executable. Uh, port dot o. Uh, there we go, and we've got the port compiler. Right, uh, we can try to uh, run that port compiler. Right, there we go. So here it is. And after that, with that port compiler, we'll be able to recompile it with itself. Uh, and there we go. So we just bootstrap the compiler. Right. So this is roughly how we're gonna. This is roughly the workflow that you're gonna have in the future for this specific project when we get rid of the Python, uh, which is pretty cool actually. Right. It's actually pretty cool, like just to have uh, two main files, uh, port.asm and port.port, and then that's enough to like continue developing this thing. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, so that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show in this video, right? So port is finally able to compile itself. Um, it's not stable, it's still buggy, so it's still quite easy to break things. Uh, but in any case, it's at least capable of compiling itself. You can find the source code of this 
entire thing in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> Thanks everyone for uh, for watching and I see you all on the next video. I don't know what we're gonna do on the next video. Maybe we're gonna just spend some time on the stream finally implementing interpretation, right? Because uh, you can compile the, the compiler, but it would be, be kind of cool to be able to simulate the compiler. And as you can see, you can't do that because uh, we don't have some of the some of the operations uh, implemented here. For example, calling functions, right? So you cannot call function in a simulation mode, right? So we need to implement that. And there's quite a few of these things that needs to be implemented. Um, so it feels like maybe like a pretty good topic for another stream, right? So make a self-hosted simulation. So that would be actually kind of cool. It would be also kind of cool to uh, simulate the compiler, to simulate the compiler, to simulate the compiler and so on and so forth and see how slow it becomes the more layers of simulation you add. So this is something to, uh, this is something interesting that I would like to see actually. So anyway, so that's everything I wanted to say. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and I gotta go. Uh, love you all. Mwah.